everyone, my name's Shelby and you're watching Read and Find Out. So today I'm finally going to be getting back into my MBTI series, a series in which I recommend books based off of specific preferences from the Myers-Briggs type indicator. My most recent video was intuitive book recommendations, and I described what intuitive and intuition meant in this context in that video. On the flip side of intuitive is sensing, and all these things exist on a spectrum, all of these kind of dichotomies between different characteristics. And people who have a preference for sensing take in information through their senses. I talked about intuition being where people kind of take in information and make meaning through inferences and patterns and connections and their own individual sense of intuition, like a gut feeling. Sensing is a bit more straightforward, it's a bit more intuitive. But um, that wasn't that funny. It kind of makes more sense intuitively because it's sensing. You are using your tactile senses. It's very present focused and in the moment. And as such, sensing people tend to pay attention to facts and details. Though I do lean on the intuitive side, out of all of the four preferences, sensing is the one that I'm the closest in between. So I'm intuitive, but I still have quite a bit of sensing going on. And the books that I picked for the sensing book recommendations tend to be a bit more atmospheric. They have a strong sense of place. And I just want to do the disclaimer that just because I think these books make sense for sensing people to enjoy doesn't mean that if you fall on the intuitive side you won't enjoy them. I fall on the intuitive side and I enjoyed all of these. And then also if you're a sensing person that doesn't necessarily mean that you will for sure enjoy these. These are my opinions backed up by descriptions of types, but still overall my opinion. And with that being said, let's just go ahead and get into the recommendations. The first one I have to recommend is a middle grade classic, and that is The Secret Garden by Frances Hodgson Burnett. Because there's the garden setting and it's the secret garden, this entire book kind of centers around Mary Lennox, this weirdly grumpy, unhappy child finding a secret garden and forming friendships and everything that are really all centered around this. There are also some descriptive scenes throughout the book that I think really appeal to the senses, particularly in relation to the garden, but also with animals and stuff like that. So this is my first recommendation for those of you who fall on the sensing side. My second recommendation is also middle grade, but this one is fantasy, and it's actually The Wonderling by Mira Bartok. I'm not going to go full description of this one because I've done an entire spoiler free review. This is my advanced reading edition. I don't have a finished copy yet, but I want one so bad because there's artwork throughout this. Not in the copy that I read, it would just say art to come, but I know based off of the cover and the map in this book, and actually flipping through some finished copies, that the art is beautiful. In short, this is a steampunk fantasy with a very strong sense of place because the place has such an impact on the story, and it's featuring Arthur, who is a groundling. He's like a human-fox hybrid, and he's missing an ear, and he lives in this home for wayward and misbegotten creatures, and he wants to escape and get out, and he makes this friend, and it's really just a cute middle-grade adventure. I think there is eventually going to be a sequel, but I don't know when that's going to happen. I really hope so, because this leaves room for a good sequel. And I think before the book was even published, the movie rights for this had already been sold because it would just make a fantastic movie. And I think that books that would make a fantastic movie work really well for sensing people because they're sensory. As an example of the art style, here's Arthur, and here is the map. It's really, really cute. I think steampunk fantasy is very sensory heavy. And as I said, I have a full spoiler-free review in the cards. My third recommendation is actually another book that I received for review, and that is Echo After Echo by Amy Rose Capetta. And as such, there will be a spoiler-free review up in the cards. <laughs> this one is a YA contemporary, but it's also a mystery, featuring a girl named Zara or Zara, I never got clarification on how her name is pronounced, who is going to a theater in New York. And the theater atmosphere is so heavy in this book. I feel like you can tell that just by looking at the cover, but if you're a theater lover, you will probably connect with this quite a bit. And there's also a really cute romance subplot, which was actually my favorite part of the book, and it's a female-female romance, 
This book it has a lot of diversity, actually. And while I found the mystery to be a little bit lacking in the ending a bit abrupt, overall I really enjoyed it. I think that sense of mystery and drama in this theater where there are murders happening is very sensing heavy. It's kind of picking up on facts and details. And also the love interest is the assistant lighting director, so there's that aspect as well of the different kinds of light and that's brought up pretty frequently throughout this book. If you like something with a cute romance that's pretty well done with a mystery component and you're into theater in particular, then you will enjoy this, I think. My fourth recommendation is one of my favorite reads of the year that I actually read back in April and I adored it, so you probably won't be surprised to see it on this list and that is The Bear and the Nightingale by Catherine Arden. This is adult historical fantasy that is set in the Russian wilderness. I think it's set in like the 1800s, and it's following Vasilisa Petrovna, who has been hearing fairy tales, these Russian fairy tales, about winter kings and everything from the time that she was a little girl. This kind of mythology and everything is a very important part of her family and her society's culture. But then a Catholic priest comes into play saying that them honoring their household spirits is actually like sacrilegious. They're essentially being heathens. So there are some religious conflicts going on, which is something that I tend to really love. But this setting, the Russian wilderness, is so present in the story, it's tangible. And I thought it was beautiful. I mentioned in my April wrap up that this would be a wonderful winter read. I read this in the spring, but if you read it in the winter, I just think that would be absolutely lovely. Especially if you are in a snowy setting. I'm in Florida, so it probably doesn't even matter for me. The winter vibe was perfect. And also the fairy tale aspects of this story were just so, I want to say they're heavy, but at the same time, they're not. They're ever present but they're not heavy-handed. And even when overt magic isn't happening, the sense of magic throughout the story is its just there. I can't wait to read the second book. And then my final recommendation is the first one that came to mind when I was thinking of sensing book recommendations, and it's a graphic novel, Blankets by Craig Thompson. I mentioned atmospheric books being very sensing to me, there are so many gorgeous winter art scenes that are portrayed throughout this. It's very hefty, even though it's kind of semi-autobiographical. It's very present feeling, it's in the moment, it's living in the moment, and it's about Craig growing up, though I believe this is a partially fictionalized account. I'm taking the books down because they started falling on me and that was unfortunate. <laughs> this gives such a strong sense, in addition to the present and the place, a sense of growing up and change that I just thought was phenomenal. Here is an example of a very wintry scene that I just think really conveys the atmosphere. really think that this book does a good job of making you feel things, and I know that that is emotional and not exactly the same as sensing. It's almost like you're re-experiencing some of your teenage years to some extent if you have ever had the feelings of the first time being in love, and I highly recommend it as well. So here are the books that I recommend for people who fall on the sensing side of the intuition versus sensing spectrum. I think that these books have a lot to offer for anybody, but particularly for those who will enjoy the detail and the sense of place, the atmosphere that each of these books holds. Anyway, that is going to be it for this video. Comment down below and let me know if you have read any of these books and also what are some books that you think would work well as a sensing book recommendation. Thank you for watching. I hope you have a good day and until next time, bye.